So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about iPadOS 15.3 Beta 2. Apple released this a couple days ago now at this point. I wanted to hold off and make sure we found some actual tangible differences before kind of running out there and telling you guys about the build number and things like that. But it took Apple almost a month to go from Beta 1 of 15.3 to Beta 2. And in reality, 15.3 so far looks like it's going to be mostly a performance update, making sure that bugs are all fixed and squashed, making sure that everything is running as smoothly as possible because there aren't too many tangible differences. But there are some things that we did notice inside of the user interface, which I do want to share with everybody. So, so without further ado, let's get the iPad out, talk about 15.3, then talk about the overall performance, my experience, the battery life, and then whether or not you guys should update to the beta program with 15.3 beta 2. Let's get into it. So we're gonna do this iPadOS video a little bit differently. We're gonna pull up the iPad screen over here and show you guys exactly what's going on from a screen recording standpoint, just so there isn't any glare or anything like that. But let's start off with the actual build number. So if we go into photos, I took a screenshot of the update itself. So this is what we're dealing with in terms of an update. So we have 15.3 developer beta 2, and we're looking at about 413 megabytes of storage for this update. So give yourselves about a gig of actual storage to make sure that it does get installed correctly and it doesn't cancel out mid-update. That actually did happen to me once, and so far my biggest regret with this iPad is going with the baseline model, because I'm on 128 gigs, and I filled that up very, very quickly, especially making these videos, transferring these videos over to the iPad Pro. So my storage situation is I'm currently, I'm constantly deleting things off this iPad Pro and moving it onto like an external SSD. But that's what we have from a size standpoint. Again, one gigabyte should be plenty in order to get this updated correctly. So then let's go into the actual build number. So if we go into the about section, let's click into the 15.3. We have 19D5040 lowercase e. So as you guys know, if you do follow these beta programs or you do follow these beta updates, the closer this E gets down to C, B, A, that means we're getting closer to that release candidate edition, and then finally the overall public release of this update. So we still have some time to go before Apple does release this update to the public, but again, we're getting closer and closer. And with this one, the schedule has been a little bit weird. Normally Apple releases our first two or three betas on a bi-weekly schedule, and then their final, you know, anywhere from two to five betas on a weekly schedule until the final public release. But this one, again, we had beta one that happened pre-Christmas, and then it took about a month to update to beta two. So right now, in terms of when I think beta three is gonna come out, I really don't know. It could be this week, next week, the week after. Apple, they're probably not in a rush to push this one because they're probably working on universal control for 15.4 for when that actually does release, which hopefully it does. And then before we get into the what's new, let's talk about the actual battery life. So let's see how we've been doing with battery life because beta one, Battery life has been pretty decent. So let's go over the last 10 days and see what we've been dealing with. We're gonna do about an hour and 23 minutes of screen on time, 35 minutes of screen off time. So not too much use, but if we go on a day like Tuesday, you can see that we used a little over 50% battery and we only got about an hour and 22 minutes of screen on time. So what that means is that we probably would only get three hours of screen on time, if not even less, if we were to use it fully through that battery life. But if we go on a day like Thursday, we got three hours and 45 minutes of screen on time with less than 50% of battery used. So that means we probably could have gotten seven hours. So it really just depends on what applications you're using, how often you're using them, what those applications are doing, whether it's something like LumaFusion, which takes up a lot of battery, or something that takes up a lot of location services data, where you need to be constantly tracked inside and outside of the application. So those are all factors that you wanna take into account when thinking about battery life on the iPad Pro. And I love the battery breakdown in the settings, because you can see that spike took 23 minutes, took up about 43%. LumaFusion, an hour and 52 minutes, took up about 19% which that right there sounds a little wonky because Spike is just my email client and then LumaFusion is what I use to edit video. So it really shouldn't be taking up 43% battery, but if we continue to move on, you see that we have Sidecar on here, 1%. I'm usually plugged in for that. The home and lock screen takes up about 3%. Affinity Photo, about one minute per percent. So this is a way to really hone in on the applications that you're using, how much battery those applications are draining on the iPad Pro. And I just hope that we continue to trend up when it does come to battery life because overall battery life has been pretty bad on these M1 iPad Pros when it really shouldn't be the case. So hopefully Apple does fix some things to make sure that we get that eight to 10 hours of battery life outside of using Apple's ecosystem because I could probably get that 10 hours of battery life if I was just on Safari all day, every day and doing nothing else but using Safari. But in reality, I'm using a bunch of other applications and that's why the App Store exists so we can kind of branch out and do whatever we want outside of Apple's ecosystem but Apple should be helping optimize battery life with all applications, including third-party applications. So now let's get into the what's new with this update. So the first thing that I noticed is inside of legacy contacts. So if you go into your iCloud, go into your passwords and security, and then scroll down to legacy contacts, 
Legacy contacts was a new feature that was implemented in iOS, I believe it was 15, to allow people to pass down their information once they are deceased and pass down their data on their iDevice to whoever they feel fit is ready to run that iDevice or get all that data out of there. So being able to add legacy contacts was a great new feature, but what they did here was they actually change up the verbiage and change up the splash screen. So now it says legacy contacts can access and download the data stored in your account after your death. And when a friend or family member adds you as a legacy contact, their name will appear here. So if I click add one, there's some new verbiage on here. I'm not gonna go into each single one, but add a legacy contact, share your access key, pass down your digital legacy. So it, it is kind of, I guess, a melancholy idea, but it's something that's needed, especially when our devices kind of run our lives. And now everything that we're doing is around iOS, iPadOS, Android, Windows, Mac OS. So everything is kind of in this digital world. So being able to pass that down, especially for necessary data, like banking information, passwords to get into your social media accounts, things like that. It's all very helpful with this new legacy contact process. The next one we're gonna talk about is also inside of your iCloud settings. We're gonna go into iCloud and we're gonna go into private relay. So right now I have it turned off, but there's a couple things that you should take into account. So first off, there is some new verbiage down here. So private relay is currently in beta. Some websites may have issues and all that good stuff. But one thing that did happen, if you have a data capable iPad, so you're on T-Mobile or Verizon or whatever the case may be to get data to your iPad, there will be some issues with Private Relay. So apparently with T-Mobile especially, Private Relay will not work when you're using T-Mobile's data. Why that's the reason, I don't really know, but Apple and T-Mobile are going back and forth. So keep that in mind, that when you're using data and you have Private Relay turned on, most likely that Private Relay functionality is not going to be working. And then the last thing that we did pull up was there's a new splash screen inside of the podcast application, the Apple Podcast. So I don't think it's a new feature because Shared With You has been around for a couple of 15.1 and 0.2 updates. So it's just find podcasts shared by your friends and messages and listen to them now. So it's so like when Apple does reinvigorate those splash screens, but again, that was small. Just something that I noticed that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. And then when it comes to overall performance, you guys remember that 15.3 beta one was actually very, very stable. And this one's no different. I'm still able to edit everything on LumaFusion. I can still pull up Twitter. I still have my multitasking working. So if I wanna swipe this down, you know, open up some pictures, I'm good to go. So all that stuff is still working from a performance standpoint. I'm very, very happy with it. If you guys do wanna check out this icon pack, I'll link it down below. We did create this one. We have a couple of different themes. This is the, the blackout one. We have a whiteout one, orange, blue, you guys name it. We do have a nice little icon pack in the description if you guys do wanna check it out. But again, from a performance standpoint, everything works great, I have zero complaints. So if you guys do wanna jump on the beta program and you guys are okay putting it on your main device, then by all means go for it because there hasn't been a detriment to anything that I'm doing from a productivity standpoint, from a data standpoint, from a leisure standpoint, everything works totally fine. We're just waiting for some new and better features to show up. But let's get out of this view and finish it up and go to the normal view. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many features, if any, that actually came out with 15.3 beta 2. They're mostly boosts of performance, bugs being squashed and fixed, making sure everything is running as smoothly as possible. The one major thing that I do wanna let you guys know about was the whole cellular carrier and then also the private relay situation. So if you guys do have an iPad that uses cellular data, private relay, depending on which carrier you're on, might not actually work when you're using cellular data. So keep that in mind, there's a whole back and forth going between Apple and the cellular carriers to let people know like, hey, if you are on data, the private relay function is not going to work. And hopefully they do fix that issue because a lot of people, they are out and about and they are using data as their main source of internet connectivity and being able to use private relay built in is gonna be an added plus. Now for most people that just have a Wi-Fi based iPad or they're at home most of the time or in a situation where there is Wi-Fi, private relay is gonna work perfectly fine. It just has to do with where the internet is coming from, the carriers, the data, and things like that. But overall, it's been a very stable update. I'm very happy with what Apple's been able to push out in terms of stability. Everything seems to be working fine. What I'm looking forward to is universal control. I don't know if Apple's gonna release it at this point, and hopefully it doesn't turn into a software version of AirPower, where they announced it, they hyped it up, and then nothing was ever released. But overall, I've been happy with the performance, and I'm looking forward to universal control, because if you saw my previous video, or one of my other setup videos, I actually now have a dual monitor display, and then being able to use macOS with iPadOS without having to leave iPadOS is gonna be amazing. Because right now I use my iPad Pro as my center hub for my dual display setup, but it runs macOS because I'm using Sidecar on the iPad Pro to run macOS through the iPad Pro and then control everything on these two monitors over here. But I do wanna be able to use universal control to be able to still use iPadOS when I want to, but then use macOS when I need to on the dual monitors. But that's just my specific use case. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that really wanna check out universal control. 
But that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Are you guys in the beta program? Are you on the public beta program? Because that one is free. If you guys do want to check that out, I'll link it below. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe again. But that was iPadOS 15.3 Beta 2. And I'm out of here. Until next time. Peace. Thank you.